Welcome back, everyone, to Freaky Tales, episode 77. And I want to start off by saying that last week we were supposed to go live, and we didn't. Um, the reason why we had to cancel at the last minute was almost the reason why we almost canceled tonight. We had an outage on our internet, and um, it was maybe about 30 to 40 minutes before we went live. I received an email that, uh, our internet was going to be turned off for about two hours and we weren't going to be able to go live. Uh, since a lot of you guys know about podcasting or may not know, you have to be hardwired in to go live. You can, you, you cannot use Wi-Fi to, to go live. Okay. Then it'll start glitching or it'll start breaking up or start pixelizing pixel, you know, however it, it does when you, you don't are not hardwired in, but when you use uh Wi-Fi. uh, same thing almost happened about an hour ago, the Wi-Fi went out uh, we had to restart things, had to make a call to our internet service. They restored it. Everything is good. We are back. So once again, I just want to apologize for that. Um, I have a good one that I want to share tonight. And uh, hopefully you guys can call in later on and be a part of the show, whether you guys want to comment on um, tonight's uh, topic or maybe you guys may just have a, a freaky story you guys may want to share. So... We'll be opening up the phone lines soon. So other than that, I will be dropping new content for the members only. And I've, I've been saying that, but it's just that we we film so much, we just need to edit it. And that's a whole different other monster within itself. But I got other locations that I've been to, uh, haunted locations where certain events, certain freaky things happen. And we'll be loading that up to the uh, the Freaky Tales membership. So if you have not become a member, go to the tab, become a member. It doesn't cost very much. And I'm... Believe me, it's the one payment a month, and it's not that much. But you give you get exclusive content, you'll be getting a lot more exclusive content. I'm trying to go every week on Freaky Tales. You know, believe me, I'm I love this one more than I do love my other podcast. Okay, I love the stories, I love the content. It's endless. Um, one of the things that I wanted to bring up because somebody emailed me and told me, you know, I remember when your show had a lot to do with paranormal, and I quickly corrected the person, you know, respectfully, and I said. It's called freaky tales, not paranormal tales. So, yes, yeah, some things are paranormal. Some things are just stories that have been passed down to us. Some things are stories that uh, somebody just shared with us, maybe a family member, maybe a mother, maybe a father, maybe a relative, or things that we might have seen. I did just didn't want to stick to one genre, if you will, of topics. So it's not paranormal tales. It's freaky tales. We talk about everything that we see, everything that we hear, everything that we experience, everything that's been shared to us. And that's what makes this uh, different from just a paranormal channel. Um, tonight's topic is something that I had been wanting to share for a long time. And uh, it's on the topic of necrophilia. Necrophilia. Now, somebody may say, Tony, what's that? Um, let me just give you the definition in a nutshell. Necrophilia is sexual attraction or acts involving corpse. In other words, where whether it's male or female, because there's only two genders, have a sexual act, a sexual encounter, something, a fetish, some type of fetish with the dead, with a corpse. Does that exist? Absolutely. Okay, uh, no, but if you can go ahead and put up pick number one, pick number one here, we have Jeffrey Dahmer. Okay, Jeffrey Dahmer was uh, pretty much sentenced to jail for life, and eventually he was taken out in jail. For what? Because he would bring men back to his hotel, have uh, homosexual relations with these men, and then take them out. You know, uh, he would delete them and even then not only have sexual acts with the, the these bodies, but also eat certain portions of these bodies. He had a, an apartment full of feet, arms, legs, and heads. He was involved in necrophilia. Uh, if you guys have not seen the documentary, or should I say the docuseries, on Jeffrey Dahmer, it's on Netflix when it came out, I would say maybe about two years ago. I actually thought the guy did a really great job. So if you have not seen it, check it out because I've actually seen the actual documentary 
about Jeffrey Dahmer. And, and this was actually based on the documentary, but they made it into a docu-series, and it was pretty much identical to the T of the documentary. So definitely, definitely check that out. Uh, I think it's a, if you can stomach something like that, then, then it's for you, okay? If not, it involves a lot of homosexuality and it involves a lot of sex and a lot of, uh, you know, uh, people being taken out, okay? Our next uh, uh, picture is, if you can load up picture number two, okay? That is Ted Bundy. A lot of you guys know him. Um, Zach Efron, if you guys recall, uh, he actually played Ted Bundy in this docu-series on Netflix as well. He, I thought he did a great job playing uh, Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy would actually uh, kidnap these women, pretend that he was hurt, for an example. He would have a fake cast on or use a crutch or a fake cast on his leg, and he would have a Volkswagen rabbit. Uh, well, actually, not a rabbit, but just a Volkswagen bug. And uh, he would he would be trying to put stuff in his car, and he would call over a woman and ask her, hey, can you help me, you know, put this in to my car? These women would think, you know, he's helpless, he, he's got a broken arm, he's on a crutch, but little did they not know that that was his gimmick. And as soon as they would step in his car, he would knock them out, strangle them while having sex, keep their bodies for about a week or two, and still have relations with these corpses. okay? As weird as that may sound, it's true. It's true. I've seen the documentary on him. I've seen his last interview that he did with Dr. James Dobson, which was a, a Christian media guy. Uh, some people say he's a journalist, but uh, he wanted to uh, confess everything to uh, Dr. James Dobson on why, uh, where all this fetish start from. And I remember the very first question, and you guys can still view this on YouTube, uh, uh, Ted Bundy, Dr. James Dobson, and uh, this is hours before they execute Ted Bundy. And uh, Dr. James Dobson asks asks him, you know, how did all this start? And he said, uh, started with soft porn, soft porn meaning uh, magazines, and eventually to videotapes, and then eventually to not only seeing it but wanting to do it. Then eventually, when once you start doing it, it becomes your lifestyle. And this was his lifestyle. This was something that he couldn't stop. That he admitted. Uh, whether he really truly meant what he said, I don't know. But uh, only he would know when he meets his maker, which, which he already met. Uh, he said that um, it was dangerous, that uh, he was warning people not to give themselves to porn because it just took them down a rabbit hole, if you will. But yes, he was into a necrophilia. So we had Jeffrey Dahmer that was involved in it. Then we had Ted Bundy. And then here we have our third picture. If we can put that up there. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. His name's Ed Gain or Ed Gein. Okay. Ed Gain or Ed Gein is G-E-I-N. If you guys can help me out. Cool. Um, this was another man that uh, many of you guys, I believe the movie came out in 1976, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And it was based on this man's, uh, if you will, the activities that he was that he was caught doing. But actually... Uh, uh, take people out he would actually delete people and then cut off their skin and actually make a purse or make a mask or anything with skin that's what he was attracted to now i didn't re i don't recall if he was ever involved in sexual acts or sexual encounters with his body but he did play around have certain acts with these corpses so that does involve necrophilia it's not always necessarily sex but it's just pretty much having uh, some type of fetish or some type of acts uh, with the dead. Now, um, if you guys have watched Silence of the Lamb, Buffalo Bill was based on this man's life. Buffalo Bill would make certain garments, certain things out of real human skin. Now, for me, if somebody were to ask me, you know, what do you think was wrong with these people? You know, they were psychopaths. You know, they were psychopaths. Some of these guys could turn it off and on. Ted Bundy was one of them. This, this, this guy, Ted Bundy, was was going to college. I mean, this guy was a brilliant guy. Many girls would say that he was an attractive man, that he had the Hollywood looks, you know, but behind um, his wife's back and his children's back, this guy was a, if you will, a Richard Ramirez that would have sex acts with 
dead women. Richard Ramirez was the same way. He was the same way. He would take you out and then rape you. And um, since we're on the subject of necrophilia, one thing, going back to Jeffrey Dahmer, if we can post up pick number one one more time, one thing about him that um, his dad, his mother actually, his mother actually confessed. She finally did an interview after his death and admitted that Jeffrey admitted this to her that he would look at newspapers and if these funerals uh, were local, that he would uh, go to these funerals and uh, consult or give his condolences to, you know, his, uh, uh, to the family that lost a loved one. Then when they would go to the burial site, he would wait till they leave. He'd come back at night, dig up the body and actually have sexual acts with the fresh body that was just placed in the ground. That's what his mother, uh, Jeffrey Dahmer's mother confessed. You know, um, I don't know anybody that can do that or that would want to, you know, I don't know. It could be our neighbor. It could be our coworker, but a lot of these guys just seem normal. Nobody ever thought anything of these guys. As a matter of fact, so many girls were attracted to, um, Ted Bundy. Uh, if we can go back to a picture number two with Ted Bundy, one thing about Ted Bundy that his wife said about him was that how she was somewhat tipped off that it could be him that uh, that the news was talking about this person that was that was taking people out was when he would have sex with her he would actually tell her open your eyes and pretend you're dead while he was having sex with her so he was addicted to the whole necrophilia sexual acting. And it's kind of gross and sick to talk about, but this, this is where these men, what these men were involved in. So I said all that to lead me into this. And if we can go to picture number four, at the, I believe it's the newspaper clipping. Okay, I want to talk about a woman called Karen Greenlee. Karen Greenlee, okay? You can probably see her name there on the, the newspaper clipping. You guys can look this up yourself. I found this quite striking that this woman got away with what she did. And this is the topic, necrophilia. Once again, a sexual attraction or acts involving corpse. Okay, so now in 1979, Kevin Greenlee was supposed to drive a hearse containing the body of a 33-year-old man to a funeral home. This is what she did for a living. She drove a hearse to and fro the funeral home, to and fro. Instead, Greenlee took off with the corpse for a two-day joyride, transporting it to another county where she had sex with it. Greenlee th then confessed to her necrophilia in a disturbing letter and was eventually charged and convicted of stealing a hearse and interfering with a funeral. Now, look what she was charged with. Stealing a hearse and interfering with a funeral, not for necrophilia. And I'll explain why. Karen Greenlee necrophilia case was a tremendous public scandal. She became one of the most famous female necrophiliacs in America's history because most necrophiliacs known to the public were male. They were male. This was actually a woman. Questions on how and why arose during her trial. So Greenlee gave a very uh, telling interview in which she seemed to largely ex accepting of her attraction to the dead bodies. So she had a fetish, she had an attraction, she had a rush for dead bodies. I, I don't know if I should even try to understand that, but this is what was going on in this woman's life. Apparently the corpse Greenlee stole was just the tip of the iceberg. And her confession, she admitted she had sex with many other corpses in the past. She claimed to have made love to anywhere between 20 and 40 bodies over the years before getting caught. As I continue to read and I continue to share, it just sinks in on how sick this is. But this is a freaky tale that I came across I wanted to share with you guys for you guys to do your own research, look it up for yourselves and, you know, uh, um, see if 
But I'm telling you what, it, what I'm telling you is true. Maybe you could find something else more intriguing than this as far as in her past. But this is what I got her story in a nutshell that I want to share with you. So Greeley was responsible for delivering the body of John McCure to a cemetery for burial. But instead, she ran off with it. Can you imagine waiting for your loved one so that you could say your final goodbyes and the body never arrives. Then you find out that the body had been kidnapped and that the woman that was driving your loved one um, had sexual encounter uh, or how she puts it, she made love to your deceased loved one. I, again, I try to understand that, but I, I don't. So... Uh, let me continue. So she ran off with it for two days. She wrote a four-page letter confessing to her crimes and stuck it and stuck it in the casket before attempting suicide by overdosing on Tylenol and codeine. Um, codeine. So in other words, after she knew she got caught, she wrote this letter, put it in the casket, and she tried taking herself out. It didn't work. In the letter, she lamented that she was cursed with an unnatural unnatural desire and confessed she was unsure why she was drawn to corpse. She also referred to herself as a morgue rat, as a morgue rat. Okay. Um, once again, she believes that she was cursed with something. So obviously she must have known that this was not natural, but she did have a fetish. Ed Gein had a fetish. Ted Bundy had a fetish. Jeffrey Dahmer had a fetish. Richard Ramirez had a fetish. And it all had to do with necrophilia. Okay. Um, so the headlines, Greenlee admitted the smell of blood and embalming fluids attracted her. Attracted her. Years after her arrest and trial, Karen Greenlee elaborated on her attraction to human bodies. She claimed she found the smell of death very attractive. Let me read that again. She claimed to have to, um, she claimed she found the smell of death very attractive, particularly fresh, freshly embalmed corpse. Even seeing blood oozing from the body was arousing to her. When you're on top of a body, it tends to purge blood out of its mouth while you are making passionate love, she said. You'd have to be there, I guess. Let me read that again. When you're on top of, the, of a body, it tends to purge blood out of its mouth while you're making passionate love, she said. You have to be there, I guess. Greenlee admitted once again that the smell of it, blood and embalming fluids attracted her. Years after her arrest and trial, Karen Greenlee elaborated on her attraction to human bodies. She claimed she found the smell of death very attractive, particularly embalmed bodies. Um, oh, my apologies. I was reading that again. She caught her. She was once caught once before. Greenlee attempted suicide multiple times prior to getting caught with stealing the body of John McCure. So every time she happened to get caught, she attempted suicide, according to her story. But they still let her work there, so I never understood. If I catch somebody, you know, are you going to report them? This is somebody's loved one, that this, this place is supposed to be taking care of them and preparing them for their families to say their final goodbyes. And then you have a morgue rat in there, you know, raping these, these corpses. And they're not going to say nothing? If, I, if you ask me, I believe that a lot of them are to blame because she claims to have slept with 20 to 40 of them. How are you going to give this person that many chances? Okay. After one particular botched attempt, she was living in a halfway house near a funeral home. She would rut routinely sneak in at night in search of bodies. If she found bodies unsupervised, she would have sex with the corpse. One night, Workers at the funeral home caught her in the act. The workers threatened to call the cops, but Greenlee bolted before they, they could see her face. Greenlee was never caught or charged with any crimes. 
but an alarm was later installed in the funeral in the funeral home. She suspects she suspects that while the police were indeed called, the workers declined to press issue as they did not want the bad publicity. So they didn't want the bad publicity uh, that they got caught slipping that this girl, this woman snuck in, had sex with these corpses, with these bodies, with these, with our loved ones. And they caught them, but they don't, they're not going to call the cops. Just get out of here because we don't want the bad publicity. So, okay. Greenlee claims that the necrophilia may be common in the funeral industry. We'll soon find out if that's true. Greenlee indicated in interviews that many funeral home workers may harbor an attraction to dead bodies. Inappropriate comments are a common uh, occurrence, and some studies indicate necrophilia fantasies are more common than you would think. Greenlee feels a lot of funeral home workers are likely caught in the act with bodies, but charges are rarely pressed as funeral directors do not want the bad publicity. And I'm almost done here. Now, she was sued. She was sued by the victim's mother. The mother of John McCure claimed she suffered extreme emotional damage due to Greenlee's actions and sued Greenlee for $1 million, but they eventually settled out of court. Now, this part right here that I'm about to share with you, uh, I didn't have it here on my notes, but if you guys care to do your homework, um, the reason why she didn't do that much jail time, because I believe this took place in Missouri. If you guys look it up, I believe this took place in Missouri. And there wasn't a law in place yet on necrophilia. So they didn't know how to charge her. But she was guilty of sin. And I believe they gave her like 25 days for her acts with these dead bodies, with this was somebody's loved one. Okay. Now, as I was preparing for this, I was also reading that there have been women, women that, um, have been preparing fresh bodies and this male body, of course, starts to get an erection. Okay. Now I was thinking to myself, you know, if the person is gone, how can he get an erection? As I continue to read that there were some women that worked in these funeral homes that were attracted to this person. I guess they had this fetish or this fantasy. And they actually got on top. And um, to my surprise, this dead body actually came. And there's been rumors that women that work at these funeral homes have gotten pregnant by these corpses. As weird as that may sound, that's why I'm going to go ahead and make my first phone call to somebody who actually worked in the funeral industry and find out if this is true because this person is embalmed, has prepared, and even bathed some of these bodies. So, uh, am I connected? Yes, okay. Okay. Hopefully, they answer. So, let's go ahead and we're going to start our phone call. After this phone call, Norbert, you can go ahead and put the number up. What's that? Yes, you, you can just go ahead and put them up there, Norbert, uh, to describe who this person is. So let's see. Can you turn me up a little bit? Okay, let's see if this person answers. If not, then... Hmm. That's her, yeah. Okay, let me see. If you're watching, please call in. And um, I have a question I want to ask you for the public since you have this experience. I tried calling, but uh, there was no. Here we go. Hello, caller, your name and where are you calling from? Hi, my name is Magic Girl. <laughs> My name is Genesis, and I'm calling from uh, Bakersfield. From Bakersfield. Okay, you had me. I thought you were on the wrong yes. podcast at the time when you said Magic Girl, but this is Genesis. This is Genesis. 
Okay. Sorry, I was trying to order some pizza. Uh, okay, okay, then you want you want me to call you back? I'm sorry if I'm interrupting your day. No, no, you're fine. I was just kidding. Okay. Um, no, you were cutting out for a little bit. Okay. Uh, can you hear me loud and clear? Yes. So if I pause a little bit, it's because I'm waiting for you to finish talking. So I'm here. Okay. My question is, is that, so have you been paying attention to what I've been talking about necrophilia in, in the funeral home? Yes. And there's a, there's, yes. And there's a lot of things that um, I'm surprised that, that people haven't picked up on that you've mentioned. And I will briefly touch on those and make the, make the phone call as short as possible. But um, I do want to answer your question first. Okay. Um, first and foremost, for the people that may not know, because I know you're, you're a moderator on both of my podcasts, and for people that may just think you're an artist, can you kind of just give your, um, your background in this field, in this line of work? Yes, um, I started off um, in the funeral industry. I have uh, seven years of experience in the funeral industry. Um, I started as a just a funeral assistant, which was just assisting the funeral director. But then I quickly jumped in after six months and um, uh, finding that it was actually a passion of mine to um, care for those no longer with us. Um, and I actually got the opportunity to be um, an apprentice embalmer and assist with the preparation of the deceased. Okay. So so you actually do have about seven years working in this field? Yes. Okay. And that was the reason why I wanted to call you because when I started doing research on this story, um, I started reading a couple of more stories on women but none of these women claim to have this many sexual encounters with this many corpses. this woman karen greenley was saying that she had sexual encounters between 20 right. to 40 all the other ones were just saying once or twice okay now yeah this is the question and i feel a little bit uncomfortable asking you but i don't know anybody else to ask is it possible mm -hmm. now so i take it you've been bombed you've, you've cared for these people you've bathed them or You've dressed them in the process of this. Is there such thing that a male um, can still get an erection? I don't know how, what other words to put it in. Um, medically, and this is where it gets kind of tricky. I'm just going to kind of uh, give you guys the, the brief summary of that. Um, the, medically, before embalming, yes, it is possible. Okay. Um, after the embalming, um, the things that these these necrophiliacs, because that's what they are, um, have to do to these bodies in order to get them aroused like that is just absolutely mind blowing. And um, I don't want to go into detail about that. Um, but um, before embalming, yes, it is impossible for an erection because you have to keep in mind that in, an erection is a parasympathetic. Uh, Oh, sorry, I'm a parasympathetic pulse that is induced dilation to the arteries that constrict the veins of the penis. So that is what causing it, uh, is, causes the erection, which is the blood flow and all of that. So if the nervous system is, is dead, that can't happen medically. So usually what happens is the, the, the necrophiliacs, they usually target um, bodies that have like, have experienced a sudden death, like very traumatic, right? So it's either like a gunshot to the head um, or usually most commonly someone who has uh, hung themselves like by suicide or poison. So it's, it's usually a death of a high stress level because you got to get the body flowing, right? And when, you, when males have an erection, it's um, the blood flow uh, through the penis. So um, they usually target um, bodies that have been deceased for a few hours. That's why you always hear of the stories of like, uh, for example, um, that lady, uh, with, uh, Karen, I believe Karen Greedley, I believe I'm pronouncing her name right. Yes. She was going to and from um, the funeral homes. Now, the stories that I've heard and actually in, in my years of experience, um, there was um, um a female who was actually fired and they pressed charges on her. She didn't work at our 
a funeral home facility, but she did work at a funeral home in another state where she was caught having sexual intercourse with, uh, with the court. Wow. And she was uh, charged, you know, and she went to jail and all of that. Um, but like I said, they usually target um, bodies that have been deceased for a few hours. So okay. that's around the only time that that can happen. Now, I'll kind of leave it open to the imagination after the person is involved. Um, how women have intercourse with men, I'll leave that to, you know, to the viewer's imagination of kind of just, you know, how that happens. But it's more common for males to have uh, sexual relations with um, females who are deceased longer for more obvious reasons, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, w w one last question, and it's because I came across this story, and I didn't want to talk about mm -hmm. the story because there were people saying that it was true, and then people saying this can't be true, almost like it's fake, it's it's too good to be true. But I found out I found a lot more saying that it was true, but since I was unsure, I didn't want to bring it to the platform. But I I need to ask you the question that arose when I read this story. Okay, so here it is. There was a story, and okay. again, I don't know if this is true. Please do your research. That there was a woman that was working in a funeral home. This body was just brought in. She was preparing them. How she maybe she was getting them undressed, toe tagging them. I, I'm not sure. That he had an erection. She got on top, and uh, he released inside of her. Okay, now this was a dead body. Supposedly, she got pregnant. Mm -hmm. She had a child, and she went after. The, the deceased male's family for child support. Now, it sounds wild, but I don't know if that's true because they were both sides saying it was true and it wasn't true. It was true and it wasn't true, so I don't know. So this question arises now, you working in a funeral home, can a freshly, I guess, body that has just been brought in, if the male gets an erection, and I do not know how else to put it, can he still come? Yes. Okay. The short answer to that question is yes, because it's usually caused by a passive seeping of the fluids, which is, which is purging. Um, when the, the body is deceased, um, you naturally just release fluids um, wherever, you know, out of your pores, out of whatever hole is in your body, fluids are going to come out of. Oh, wow. So um, if the, the person was uh, recent, like you said, recently passed and she was preparing him, um, it is very highly likely for that to happen. Um, and that usually happens, um, that, that purging, the purging of the fluids happens usually between four to six days after death. So it continuously happens four to six days after. Um, if the body's not embalmed, of course, that can still happen. The fluids can still, you know, um, pass through. And um, I lost my train of thought for a second because I was thinking, I was thinking ahead of myself. Okay. Um, but yes, that can, that can definitely happen. Okay. Okay. Um, that, those are the only two questions that I had. Um, um, if there, if there's anything you care to add, you know what, uh, please do so because I'm going to open up the phone lines for people to either to give their opinion about this or to share their freaky tales. But if there's anything else you want to add to this, maybe something that you might've <clears throat> missed or maybe something people should be aware of or people, something sh people should know. <clears throat> Yes, I think just very, very briefly, I want to touch on um, how um, Lady Karen was saying that, oh, most people, it's very common for people in the funeral industry to have these attractions to, to, you know, to the deceased. Well, and I know I'm being kind of soft when I say this, but, uh, first and foremost, um, I, I do believe that that is completely atrocious. It's not, it's not morally correct. Um, I'm just speaking on a professional perspective, if that makes sense. Yes. So, um, long story short, necrophilia is actually, and I have to explain this so people kind of understand what necrophilia is, because they automatically think that it's like, um, oh, well, he just likes dead people. He can't harm anything, okay? And as I'm explaining these things, I want you to kind of pick up on some of the people that you were just talking about and ask yourself, does this describe these people, okay? So, necrophilia comes from a word, um, that's necro, meaning corpse or deceased, and philia, meaning affection, okay? So that's why they call it necrophilia, because a lot of people think that it's very broadly, like, just, oh, like, a sexual act with the corpse, but it's actually more than that. 
It could also be something from like getting pleasure from viewing the deceased or getting arousal, arousal or just finding pleasure in the thought of a deceased person, period. So mm. it's not just sex. So a lot of people, a lot, a lot of people who are ne- necrophiliacs find some pleasure in just viewing the body or just smelling it or just being around it because it gives them some type of stimulation. Now, a lot of studies show that about 90% of it is actually a fetish. Mm. And it sounds so crazy to describe it because you know how like, I don't know how else to explain it. Like some people will say, um, oh, that, that man or that woman has a fetish for soft hands. Like that's what turns him on, you know? So that's what they're describing necrophiliac as. Like it's a fetish because ultimately what it is, is that these people are finding, um, they're finding the joy and the rush of that they can have sex and be close to somebody and touch somebody and feel somebody without rejection Mm. so without a no wow so if you really think about it that describes what jeffrey dahmer it describes a lot of rapists and serial killers they get a thrill and a rush off of having somebody that is not going to reject them yeah so it's pretty much uh, it's more than just like stimulation it's 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 a beyond um explainable you know, mental disorder, I believe, but slash fetish, that's what scientists are call, like talk, calling it or whatever. But I just truly believe that, it, that that's a way of desensitizing people to the reality of the atrocious acts that people do. Because yeah. that, at my personal belief, you know, somebody who, who goes that far with things that far, there's something mentally wrong with you and there's absolutely something demonic going on. But yeah. other than that, um, I kind of just wanted to, wanted to touch on that because um, I did, I was watching the beginning and I did notice that you, you were talking a lot of things, describing a lot of things that could be fetishes. You know, they weren't necessarily mental disorders. They were fetishes. So I think that's something that people need to take into consideration when they, when they think or talk about this subject, because it describes a lot of serial killers and a lot of serial rapists. Yeah. Yes, it does. It falls, it all falls into the same category. Yes. Other than that, I don't have anything else to add. And um, I appreciate you giving me a call. It's always fun to be on the show. And Absolutely. If, unless you have any other questions, I'll make way for the other callers to call in. No, Genesis. Uh, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate your time and for being a part of the show and for answering my questions. I just think it opens it up for other callers to call in and chime in and share. So thank you. Have a blessed night and we'll talk soon. Okay, sounds good. Good night. night. Okay, you can go ahead and put up the number, please. Pretty interesting topic, don't you think, Norbert? (laughs) Speaking to the mic. Yeah, it's pretty sick what they're doing. Have you ever heard of things like that, Norbert? Yeah, yes, I have. Uh, It's mainly from Europe and uh, a lot of people. I mean, it goes back to the story of Frankenstein, right? Yeah, 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 that's a great point. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know what? Uh, as the phone lines are open, uh, once again, if you guys want to comment on what's been, what we, the topic that we've been talking about, uh, or maybe you have a story you guys want to share, maybe you just have a question pertaining to the topic, call in right now before the um, the phone lines get jammed up. Here we go, right here. Let's see. Call her your name, or where are you calling from? This is Fred from Soledad. Tony, how you doing, bro? Fred, how are you tonight? Yeah, I'm good, brother. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, yeah, just calling in on this uh, interesting uh, freaky tale tonight, man. That's uh, that's uh, freaky, but it's a good thing. <laughs> but uh, no, man, I, I was calling you, bro, because uh, one thing that I did I did learn, I'm gonna tell you a couple of things. Yeah. Um, I uh, the mortician here in, in Florida, bro. He he, you know, I've been over there with him and. And uh, we've talked and stuff, and I've helped him out a little bit. It's not my thing, to be honest with you. Yes. But uh, I did learn one thing, bro, about a about a corpse once it, once it's embalmed, and it's uh, you know we usually think that they're frozen or stiff or whatnot. The the situation is that they're actually not. It's almost like a rag doll, with with all due respect, because what the embalming fluid does is it burns the tissue. 
So they're able to move, you know, you're able to move them around and, and stuff like that, right? But the other thing, too, the embalming fluid, at least in, in my experience, was it's like a strong smell of band-aids, bro. And that's kind of sick, to be honest with you, just, to, you know, on the stuff you were saying. Yeah. Um, another, another, uh, another bit I will tell you, when they fly a corpse, you know, from one end, you know, from one place to another, they fly in an airplane. Yeah. They cannot feel the casket, like the, the, the dome, like the, you know, the top, they can't feel it. You mm. can't, you can't, um, you can't, you know, because you feel it, because if you do, bro, it'll, it'll, it'll buckle, bro. It'll collapse the, the, the dome on the casket because oh, of the pressure, that. bro. That's wow. one thing. Yeah. 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 And well, there's more, but I, you know, do the time I'll, I'll give everybody respect, bro. But yeah, then I just started calling and tell you that, man. All good. I'll tell you that until you guys you know that stuff that I that I've learned along the way. Okay, my brother, you guys have a good one, huh? You too, brother. Thank you. Thank you for calling in. Yeah, that, I didn't know that. Well, you know, you learn something new, and that's the beauty about sharing topics like this because there's people from everywhere that are willing to share their experiences, their stories when it comes to topics like this. Um, or if, like again, if you guys just want to call in and just to share a story, I know a lot of you guys have said, Tony, I want to call in, but I got too many stories. I'll save it for the next time. So right now is next time. Go ahead and call in and uh, let us know what you guys, you know, uh, 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 what you guys think of the topic or if you guys want to uh, touch on it or uh, bring up maybe just something different. Go ahead and do so. Right now is the time. I know a lot of you guys like Freaky Tales and I enjoy it too. But I also really like learning from you guys. So go ahead and call in. You know, fun fact, uh, the Egyptians were known as some of the first embalmers in history. Really? Yeah. Okay. That's what they would do to their pharaohs. They would uh, embalm them and uh, put other pieces in, like, jars and uh, bury them with it. You know, uh, I also heard, too, because I, I love Egyptology. And one thing that I heard and I read, Norbert, whether it's true or not, most people say it's true, that back then when they would take out your brain, they would actually stick something through your nose, almost like a hanger, and swirl it and then pull it out through your nose. Yes, I actually heard the exact same thing. Wow, that's... I guess you got to be somebody skilled to do that, right? Yeah, actually, even the the mummies from uh, South America were known to be embalmed. So that's a practice that was uh, being practiced in ancient times. You know, one place that I want to go to, you know, is Guanajuato, Mexico. Uh, because one thing about Guanajuato, Mexico, they have las momias de Guanajuato. They have mummies still there. I didn't know that. Yeah. They, they, um, when I was a kid, how I found out is that my father took us to go see a movie in downtown L.A., and they were called La Momias de Guanajuato, and they had wrestlers in it, like Santo, Blue Demon, and uh, uh, Mexican wrestlers. So I just happened to ask my dad, well, no, was that true? And he goes, no, in Guanajuato, they actually do have mummies. that you That's what they're known for. You can actually go and see those, those mummies there. There is a conspiracy. I don't know if you believe it, but in the Grand Canyon, there's be the, people believe that there's actually uh, pyramids and uh, mummies that were founded there and actually... Uh, Closed off to the public. What are your I, d I didn't know that. But you know what? Hey, anything's possible, bro. Because one thing about living here is that they hide everything from us. You know? So, and you know what? I am actually shocked that the phone lines are usually blowing up. They sure are. The, the phone lines are usually blowing up. And then today, you guys are not calling. So, I'm kind of wondering if not. We'll end the show earlier, Norbert. Yeah. You know? And we can go drink that nice... Beer, beer Belgium, that I bought. Bel Bel Belgium beer, yeah. Yeah, some Belgium I'm beer. looking forward to that. Yes, me too. So uh, we're going to give you guys a couple of more minutes, and uh, let's see who's going to call in. Once again, if you guys want to share a story, something that's been passed down to you guys, uh, or something pertaining to this topic, please do so now. If not, me and Norbert are going to continue to chop it up for a few minutes, and then we'll end the show early. So, but you guys have been requesting Freaky Tales, so here we are. And uh, I believe Fred is calling again. Fred, is this you? Hey, yes. hey, yeah, it's me again, brother. It's me again. Hey, listen, um, you brought up another thing. Since nobody's calling, bro, I thought I'd call in and Go fill you in on more stuff. Uh, you know how you said about the nose thing, that they would pull it out through the nose or whatnot? Mm -hmm. But one of the things in the embalming process or the preparing process is they get uh, a bunch of cotton and they shove it up the nose, bro. And it sounds wicked. And they're like, <laughs> like you could hear screeching they stuff you with cotton and there's 
just for the fluid. Any fluid would not come out in the, in the event of, uh, wow. you know, in the event of anything leaking, bro. I, you know, I'm not gruesome, but it is freaky tales, bro. So I thought, I, you know, I thought I'd, <laughs> I'd come in and, well, that's and a pre- tell you on some That's a freaky that. detail. Yes, that's good. That's good. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad yes. you took the time. Well, yeah. That, that's... <clears throat> Oh, no, yeah, definitely. Okay, man. Hey, but, you know, hopefully I inspire people to call in, man. But okay, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm, right, I'm right here, man. Yes, All right. peace. peace. And you know what's funny is that most people, Norbert, tell me, bring freaky tales. I, I must have got like 10 messages last week, like people upset, you know. Here we go. Call her your name and where are you calling from? Tony A. Caesar from Paris. Caesar from Paris. How are you, my friend? We are good. We are good. I didn't think uh, the last couple of podcasts, you didn't have no phone calls. So I kind of took a night off, but then I, I see you're taking calls again. So let's do it. Let's get back on track. Yes, yes. Now, let me uh, say something, Caesar. And, and I need to explain yes. to, to the public. Um, many times when I don't take phone calls, many times it's because the artist, is usually the artist that I ask, do you want to take calls and the majority of the time they say yes maybe 15 percent of the time they'll say no and i'll tell you why some of these artists sometimes get hate on social media and for some reason they're afraid for some of these guys to call in so i have to respect that so the next day i get bombarded with dms your show was whack you took away the phone calls and i'm not going to explain that to everyone that the artist didn't want phone calls. So, but we're live. Yeah. Caesar, go ahead. The floor is yours. Yeah. And we're, and we're live. And like, you know, uh, Caesar from Paris likes to chime in all the time. And for all the artists, the future artists that, uh, that want to come in a rodeo radio, freaky tales or whatever it is with Tony A, just know that there are fans that do research, uh, are interested in your story. That's why you're out here interviewing. You know, and you're interested in it. Some people do really, Give a shit about their struggle and their strife. Yes. Now, that saying. Um, oh, hold, on, hold on. Let me let me follow the volume here. That saying, great topic today. I think uh, everybody of us has maybe, I don't know, maybe in the Norbies, we might even have a little necrophilia in all of us. Because, uh, shit, I'll tell you what, if one of the Sheila Ortega or one of the other Ortega sisters are, are dead in front of me, uh, you know what I mean? Like, I had something. I think all of us, as all of us as men, have that sick little drop in the back of our mind. Or is that just me, Tony? I think that might just be you. But okay, well, I'll, I'll, you know, I, 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 I would, you know, you know, okay, okay. Let, let, let me give you a scenario, and I think this is what you're talking about. You're referring to, right? Say that. Right. Say that there's a very famous woman laying in front of you, and you are the mortician. Say, uh, you know, um, yeah, and Mar- I'm talking, I'm talking the girl of your dream. Okay. It's so happy to be in front of you. Like, let's you just, know? let's just name some women. Let's just say that you were working during the time of Marilyn Monroe and you knew she was All with right. both Kennedys. You know, she was with Joe DiMaggio. Well, look, look, let's, let's, Tony, let's keep it free details. Let's say Elvira was in front of us. Okay. Yes. I would probably be more groupied out than, than have a sexual attraction. Okay. So yeah, I would probably be you grouped take it a out. Selfie? What's that? Would you take a selfie with the no, with no. the corpse with a viral like this? No, I wouldn't. Yeah, you know what, Tony? I'm I'm gonna be the first to admit it. Uh, uh, Caesar from Paris has problems. You okay. Know? <laughs> like, I'll, I'll be I'll be mad enough before anybody else says it. Fuck it. Okay. Well, All you gotta do is be honest. I mean, I'll tell you this much. I'll, t- I'll be honest, and I'll be honest. The closest thing I ever fucked to being a corpse. It's Miss Pac Man. So I know I'm double I'm double cost there anyway. And by the way, since I, I missed a couple of last calls, I'm kinda of backed up on Miss Pac Man uh hits. Can I make a couple of statements? Uh feel free if you like, yeah. All right, here we go. Boom boom, bitch. Waka waka. Get ready. The back of Miss Pac Man's legs look like Edward James almost cheeks. It looked like she just got slapped with a cactus. Let me see. Uh Miss Pac-Man, when she lays down on her stomach, her legs look like cum deposit trays. Uh, let me see. One more. Uh, Miss Pac-Man has a tattoo of Robert De Niro playing 
playing Mr. You Know Who on the back of her neck. We won't say that. Uh, let me see. Miss Pac Man Spalones, I spoke crack. He had little pebbles stuck on them. Uh, Miss Pac Man wipes back to front. Uh, Miss Pac Man cuts the strings off her tampons because the crabs keep on bungee jumping. <laughs> Oh, uh, this is right, still coming. Miss Pac Man's truth keeps toilet paper balls. Too many freaky yeah. jokes. Too many freaky jokes, Caesar. But I appreciate you. Bro. I got I got all day. I got pages. I all got pages good. of them, bitch. All I good. told you we ain't letting off your neck. Caesar from Paris, Tony. Love you guys and I'm out. out. Thank you. Well, he hasn't called in a minute, so I guess he had to catch up, guys. So he was really backed up. Yeah, he was really, really backed up. But he said he would take a selfie with Elvira. Now that's a question for you, Norbert. That's a, this is a freaky question. Who say um, you're you're working in a funeral home, and then God forbid you bring in somebody from the film industry or the music industry, and you're like, "Wow, this is her." Can you see yourself taking a selfie? Yes. Really? Yes. Okay. Let me answer this call, and then we'll get back to that. Call her your name, and where are you calling from? Chris from Hollywood. Chris from Hollywood. How are you doing? You almost sounded like you were asking me a question. Uh, yeah, I was actually, I do have a question for you. Yes, sir. So my question to you, do you believe in zombies? Because some people believe that zombies are true. You know, when I first heard of the word zombieism, was when I first saw in the 1980s a movie called uh, Serpent and the Rainbow. And it was uh, based out of um, uh, I just had it. No, bro, where are the um, where are the Fujis from? Some of them are from I thought they were from either. Haiti. Or... From Haiti. I'm sorry. Okay. It was based yeah, out of that's what I think I heard. Yes, and mm-hmm. uh, it was about they would create some type of powder, blow it in your face, and then what would happen is that you would pretty much pass out. Your heart rate would be so, so low that they would pronounce you dead, but you were still alive. They would bury you, right. and then in a couple of days, you dig yourself out and you're walking around, so people would say that was a zombie. I, I don't know if that's true. Like I really do not know. Um, I've seen great zombie movies. I think it was World War, World War Z with Brad Pitt. That was a great movie. Some people believe in a zombie right. apocalypse. I, I don't know. I just think that the only way that they can do that is if they poison people and people are just out here like tweakers running the streets and have no longer any recollection of who they are. That's right. probably my right. best answer. What about yourself? Do you believe in zombies? Uh, no, not really. I don't believe. I just I play a lot of games that have zombies, but other yeah. than that, no, nothing else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there was a man in Florida, and a lot of you guys heard of it. Uh, he was actually a black man, and you guys can actually look this up. I don't know if he was on drugs or, or whatnot, but they actually caught him in broad daylight eating a man that he had caught. Saw him on the street, tackled him, beat him up, and started eating. Everybody said he was just on drugs. But when they called him, they really? caught him, they killed him, yeah. This made news no, no longer than maybe, than maybe 10 years ago at the most. And it was out in Florida. This guy huh. was literally caught on camera eating this man. And people were saying that that was a zombie. So, again, I don't know how true that is or if they, maybe this man just lost his mind. Yeah. Uh, a video today was told to me that it's been trending. Norbert, I don't know if you've seen it. Somebody got hit. But I don't know if it was by a train, by a car. It was an accident. Body parts flew. And this man actually picked up this woman's leg and started eating it. Today, that, I saw that today. No, I haven't seen that, but uh, wow. DM me that, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And some guy filmed him, and he was like, look, he's eating him, he's eating him. And he was bending over and eating this part of this body. So, okay. uh, yeah, huh. interesting stuff, man, freaky stuff. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. okay. So, other All than right. that. All right, that's pretty much it for my question. All good, my friend. Thank you for calling in and being All a part right. of the show. Good night. Right. Good night. Yeah, no, but that was actually... Um, as, as a matter of fact, you know who sent that to me, I believe? Genesis did. So, Genesis, if you're watching, please DM that to Norbert uh, because uh, she was the one telling me that it was trending today. I didn't really watch it, but from what people were telling me, hey, have you checked this out? Have you checked this out? Have you checked? And I was like, wow. That guy must have been really hungry. Yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. Call her your name and where are you calling from? 
Yo, Tony. Yes. Hey, man, uh, whatever happened with Pantera? Pantera? Yeah. El que te dejó la gargantera. Oh, yeah, that was a good one, bro. That was a good one. You got another one? <laughs> nah. Hey, but you know what? I give you credit for trying, bro. That was a good one. So thank you. Thank you for All that right, freaky bro. joke. <laughs> he hung up. Come on, man. But he was from Arizona. So, um, okay. Let's. So Norbert, you admitted that if you worked in a funeral home and they brought in a celebrity, somebody that you possibly liked, looked up to, supported, or whatever, you would actually take a selfie? No, it wouldn't be somebody I supported. It would probably be somebody that was e- that added to the evil of this world. Okay. Okay. All right. Let me let's get this phone call. Call her your name and where are you calling from? Hey Tony. Yes. How you doing, man? It's Isaiah it's from the city of Vernon. The city of Vernon. How are you doing tonight? I'm good, buddy. How are you, man? I'm doing good, man. I'm enjoying tonight. I I'm enjoying tonight's topic and I'm glad people are calling in and being a part of the show. Yeah, yeah, man. Thanks, man. Uh, so to touch on the topic that you guys are talking about, I mean, I, I don't know too much about that microfilioma mic- or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I know that we do live in a sick world, man. Yes. We live in a sick fucking world, man. And and you know these people that are that are got some screws loose up in their heads, man. Um, you know, uh, you know, I I don't believe in zombies, but I think that's how it's gonna start, where people are, are gonna eat other people. We're gonna catch a disease, and 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 something's gonna like an outbreak is gonna happen. Um, so yeah, I you know it, it, it's just it's just a mess of world, man. Yeah, and, it is. And, and you know, on the subject, uh, you, you guys were talking about the man in Florida. He was on fat. Uh, was it bat, bat salt? Uh, that, that, that guy was on drugs, man. He, oh, he is, was, uh, is that what that was? was? That that's what it was, brother. He, he was on bat salt, man. They, they, mm. caught, they, they said when they, they did the autopsy that, that he was on some kind of drug, and I think it was bath salts, man. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, but... yeah. And, you know, and, and, you know yeah, there, there, there's that, you know, I don't know if you're, you're familiar with, with Skid Row and downtown, but um, there, 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 there's actually uh, uh, some kind of like like a virus, dude, that was, that was eating flesh. And I think it was because they were shooting up some kind of like tar or heroin or some shit. Yeah. And, and, and you know. If we go back to the same thing, man, it's a sick world, man. It's, it's, it's messed yeah. up, dude. You yeah. know all the stuff that happens. You know, you gotta be, you gotta be insane to to, to have a crazy thought with a dead body. You know what I mean? And I agree with you one hundred percent. And that's why I said earlier, it's it's. I find it hard to try to understand it, and sometimes I don't want to understand it. Sometimes people say you need to have an open mind to understand these people, but I don't know if I want to have an open mind to try to understand that kind of person. You know, um, I agree. I agree, man. You know, so, uh, I mean, like people like that, look, I do, I do a lot of interviews, but I do want to say this, um, say that I had an opportunity to interview Jeffrey Dahmer and, or Ed Gein or, uh, Ted Bundy or Richard Ramirez. I wouldn't want to, like, I, I, I don't want to sit across somebody like that. So. Oh man, you, th- you think you think you can get possessed, or maybe catch something when you're face to face with something, someone like that? I, I do believe in the power of touch. I do believe that things can be transferred by touching someone. Like I mm-hmm. couldn't never shake somebody's hand like that. Okay, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. but there are people like them out there today that have just never gotten caught, so we don't necessarily know True. them. Okay. But I will say this, that people like that, I, my opinion, I do believe have a strong demonic presence following them. Now, what they have, can it somehow be attached to you or follow you when you go home? I believe that that to be true. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's why I always All say, right. you know, be careful who you let in your house. True so, indeed, man. True indeed. Yes. I agree, man. One hundred percent. I think, you know, not not everyone has good uh, you know, good good feelings towards people, you know what I mean? Yeah. There are people that have fucked up childhoods, you know what I mean? They went through a bunch of crazy shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. And later on when they're adults, you know, they, they tend to show that you know, that behavior. 
Yeah, so yeah, man, it's it's, it's crazy, man. Hopefully, you know these people got to find God, man. Simple as that. Yeah, I yeah. and I, I agree with you, man. But thank you for calling in, bro. Taking the time. You got it, brother. Hey, oh. love the show, man. Thank you. Keep it up. Thank you. Okay, let's keep it going. Let's see. All right. So, Norbert, you were finishing saying somebody that. Oh, yeah. Somebody that just added to the evil of this world. I would take a selfie, you know, just to confirm to the people of the world that this person is dead. Now, would you post that? Yes. Wow. Okay. Wow. Not, not, not you? No, I would not. Call it your name and where are you calling from? What's up, Tony? It's Lottis from West Texas. Lottis from West Texas. How are you tonight? Doing well, man. Enjoying the show. Good. Uh, I wanted to bring up something. Uh, it's sort of, it's uh, similar to necrophilia, but uh, cannibalism. Okay. Um, I don't know if you're you're aware about what's going on in Haiti at the moment with the, all the civil unrest out there. Yes, I, I just very little. I heard a, a little bit of that's going on right now. So maybe if you can fill us in. Yeah. Well, well um, just to summarize it all, um, they've been in a state of civil war for for quite some time. And it's gotten out of hand as of late, um, so much that uh, the U.S. has evacuated all uh, non-essential personnel from the embassy. Um, they they put alerts out for travel, uh, asking people asking people if you're there to get out um, and not to go there if you if you're not there already. Um, the prime minister has resigned and has fled the country. Wow. And uh, there's a guy there named uh, Jimmy Cherizier, and he's now the most powerful man in Haiti. Uh, he's a gang leader. Um, they have uh, videos circulating of cannibalism, um, just uh, open air meat markets selling human meat, uh, butchering human beings in the streets, uh, in the back, you know, back of rooms and places. That there, it, and people are, are there are also so hungry out there that they're resorting to um, cannibalism when when desperate enough. Wow. But um, this, this is a very it's become more common as of late and um the weird kind of weird because the, the media has been trying to uh, debunk the videos but but they're out there and if, if uh anybody has the, the stomach out there to, to seek them out i I'd recommend you look at them they're 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 quite different and um wow. but yeah cannibalism again in, in haiti it's uh it's happening it's, it's widespread um the, the whole country's in complete chaos right now it's like the mad max type shit you know Wow, and, and this is going on simply because this, if you will, this gang leader took over, is withholding the help, the food. Is this why? Well, it, it started out as a warring faction between between gangs that were at war with each other. And, you know, like anything, um, you know, innocent people are caught in the middle. So um, it's kind of thrown the whole country into a, a state of uh, emergency at the moment. Um, the food's running out. Um they never had good conditions in the first place, but it's getting even worse. And um, people are resorting to cannibalism and um, mass murder is, you know, off the charts over there right now. And um, the entire country is being, being ran over by gangs. And it's a, it's just a, a scene of maybe what be to come for other countries who, you know, allow certain things like that to happen. And um, which is, I don't know. I think Haiti, it, it needs a lot of help or it needs to be done with entirely. Somebody needs to go in there and clean up, you know? Wow. Wow. Well, <clears throat> we haven't heard Biden saying anything about it. So, but uh, I do encourage, uh, no. yeah. yeah, I do encourage everyone who's listening to go do your research on that because I have seen certain videos. I just didn't know a lot of that if they were old or, you know, they were recent. I wasn't mm -hmm. sure. But now since you brought it up, I'm definitely going to look into it. Yeah, there's some there's some places that put them out daily, and uh, there's at least two or three each day with, um, like I said, the open air meat markets, and um, you know they're they're butchering each other out there, and um, the whole, there's a whole lot of interesting stuff out there if you, if, if anybody cares to look at it. Wow. Okay. Thank you for that, Lotus. Really appreciate you with that all, all that info. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, my Talk brother. Talk to you later. Peace. Okay, the phone lines are open. If you guys want to call in, and um. And uh, share your freaky tales. If you guys have a question, 
or anything like that, go ahead and call in now. Wasn't well, Haiti that place that had that hurricane? I'm not sure on that one. I'm not sure, but let me go ahead and uh, take this call. Call her your name, and where are you calling from? Hey, what's up, Tony? Uh, this is Ricardo. Uh, just um, calling out. Um, I got a story to share if that's cool. Go ahead, Ricardo. Thank you for calling in. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, I'm from Wilmington. I grew up right there in the, in the project back in the days. Um, on the west side. A lot side. of stuff going on there, you know, um, but I want to talk about, like, like sleep paralysis and, like, kind of out of experience. Yes. I remember I started um, having uh, sleep paralysis when I was, like, a teenager. Uh-huh. And then from there, dude, like, um, growing up there, you know, a lot of stuff happens, a lot of activity, and then, you know, we're doing drugs and shit like that, and, you know, just uh, coming from a broken home, you just start building up hate, dude, and yeah. I think that has to do with a lot of stuff, you know, hate. Yeah. It just builds up bad energy, but um, going forward, um, we used to, like, you know, you, you have a lot of people doing good deeds, like Christians coming around the neighborhood and trying to preach to you, and one time they handed us these little Bibles, little orange Bible back in the days, and um. I remember I had it, and I would leave it on my TV set, and one time, uh, dude, I had sleep paralysis, I don't know, but I felt like something on the side of me real bad, you know? Yeah. It, like, bad energy, and it was like a like a purple spear, I don't know, man, it was just, like, moving, dude, and I seen it at the corner of my eye, but I couldn't move, I had oh. sleep paralysis, but I had this out-of-body out of experience where I just felt my body get up and reach for that Bible, and as soon as I touched that Bible, I woke up, dude. Wow. Uh, that's pretty. That was pretty crazy, dude. But like, you felt like that presence wasn't good, and you know, yeah. and we talk about possession and stuff like that. And I think these these are these spirits that linger around, you know, and feed off your energy and yes. try to come into you when yeah. you're at a all time low. You know, your your energy's low and all this stuff. You know. Yeah. Did 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 this happen when you were living here in Wilmington in the projects, or is this when you moved out? Yeah, I'm the. No, on the project, on, on, right there on the west side back there, when they tore them down. Remember when they tore them down? Yeah, Dana Strand, I, I believe that was the name of it. We, we just yeah, called Dana them, Strand, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we just called them the projects. I had a lot of friends out there, and I used to hang out there, but this was more mid-'80s, and I remember back then, man, there was gang violence. The crack was at an all-time high, bro. You know, so. Yeah, yeah a, lot of, a lot of shit would go down, dude. We would be kids, go out on Hawaiian Avenue, and then. We seen dead bodies or just, you know, before sun, sun got up, man, there used to be getting shootings and, you I know mean, what I mean? But we were just kids, but growing up, yeah. and then we're growing up through that, through that environment, you know, Absolutely. as a young adults and stuff like, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah, I just always, man, big fan, always wanted to call, man, appreciate this uh, YouTube channel, man, your, your context, original, man, just keep it up, man. Thank you, Don't let brother. these uh, haters get to you, man. Thank you. Appreciate you, man. Yeah. Have a blessed night, though. You know, we're also, you know, we're you too, man. Stay up. Later. Okay, peace. It's good to hear somebody. You know, Norbert, those projects got torn down. But uh, you know what? And I don't mean this. I mean this respectfully. But those projects were a haven for gang violence, for, you know, drug activity. And I used to be out there. That was the intention, though, right? It was meant to become that. P- probably. I don't know, Norbert. But that's what it became. Call her your name and where are you calling from? Hello, Tony. This is uh, Bosley from the Cosmos. Uh, hey, hey, Bosley from the Cosmos. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you guys? We're doing pretty good. I hope you're enjoying the, the topic tonight. I am. It's great. I'm so happy that you guys are back and that it started early. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to share with us tonight? So just a little bit about a small little detail about Ted Bundy. Yes. And it's connected to him getting caught. It's connected uh, by the power of the rosary. Okay. Okay. So um, they left out that detail from his um, true story when they made the movie. But it is um, filed that... um, uh, on his criminal file that he said that he confessed that um, the last girl that he attacked, he broke into um, this three girls' apartment and he was able to rape, torture, and kill two of them. Wow. But the last one, he couldn't um, uh, he couldn't 
fight her because he said that there was a strong force that he couldn't fight and help her fight him off. And actually, he was repelled by the power of the rosary. Wow. Because this girl, um, her grandma gave her the rosary. She didn't believe on the rosary. But she said that she had had it uh, blessed just for her. And um, she didn't have to wear it, but to keep it near her. And so she had it under her um, mattress. And when when he um, tried to attack her, uh, something just, you know, overpowered him. And she was able to fight him off. And that's how he got caught. And it is on... And it, it, you can Google this information. It, it is on the internet. And actually, I'm trying to remember it because <clears throat> it's been a while that anybody brought up Ted Bundy. Yeah. But it, it reminded me of when this first came out. Yes. No, you know, I'm glad you appreciate. I mean, I appreciate you calling in and sharing that because I've never heard of that before. Yes. It's, um, you can, you can look it up. It's, uh, more detailed information um, is somewhere in online. They do have it. And also, uh, just a little bit on the zombies. Do I believe in zombies? Uh, yes. But zombies are not made or born zombies. They're making them zombies. There's a substance that is going inside their body that is uh, intentionally, somebody intentionally is letting it out and is selecting a specific people they're putting this substance to um, do something to the brain. And it gives oh. them, I heard, um, it gives them the strength of like five or six people. Wow. And this is why it's really hard for when they call the cops on them to try to restrain them. They have to have like several cops try to control them because their strength is uh, yeah. per- pretty strong. And so... Um, also, um, I know you guys are going to say, oh, not the Simpsons again. But actually, the Simpsons talk a lot about prophecies and what's going to happen because the Simpsons was um, cre- it, it, it was created by the 33 Masons. And uh, they have psychic abilities. And actually, not only psychic abilities, but these are political agendas. And... Um, also, the Bible, it's, um, it's an agenda. It's not that they're, it's prophetic. It's agendas. They, they know, they populate it with an exact timing that are going to happen. Yes. And if you guys ever want to know what's coming next, just look up an episode of uh, The Simpsons. Like, look up The Simpsons on 2024. You'd be shocked. And everything that they see, speak i mean it's sort of like another bible and i know the government is supposed to tell us the truth but they don't say it they say it in a hidden way if you can find it you're lucky if not you stay behind yeah so if you can look up any anything in the simpsons you'll see many things that have happened but they explain it it's funny how they put it in a cartoon kids can see it but not adults because adults won't sit and watch the Simpsons, but the Simpsons shouldn't even be for kids. Yeah. I so, agree. Um, if, uh, huh. So if you guys ever, I mean, just look up Simpsons 2020 and see what's going to happen this year or look up Simpsons 2023. You'd be shocked. But yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Oh, good. Bosley. Uh, we, it's always a pleasure when you call in and share your, your knowledge and your, you know, your, your what, what you called in the share is always very intriguing. It's always very interesting. So thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Tony. Thank you. Thank you for taking my calls. Oh, you're very welcome for being a part of the and show. Thank, thank you for thank giving you. me the, uh, the opportunity to share. Thank you so much. You guys have a good night. I um, say hello to the, the chat too. I like them all. <laughs> all good. Thank you. Have a blessed one. Okay. Norby's we got a couple more minutes. And uh, we're probably going to take about two more phone calls. Sounds good to me. Okay, good. And then, um, and then I want to end with you, uh, your selfies. Hey, all right. Okay, guys. Um, 
depending on how long the next call is, the next call might be the last call. So go ahead and call in, uh, share your freaky story, freaky tales, call her your name and where are you calling from? Call her. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Yes. Hello? Yes, we're here. Are you banging or shit? What's that? Are you banging or shit? Uh, we don't have time for that, bro. This is Freaky Tales. This guy asked me, am I banging? Yeah. I'm banging the Bible over your head. So anyways, let's keep it going. So, <laughs> I thought he was saying banger shit. I, like, What's I have no shit? idea. Call her your name or where are you calling from? Oh, what's up, Tony? Uh, from Delano. How are you doing tonight? Um, yeah, I was trying to get a hold of you to tell you about the, that zombie, about the guy that was eating the foot. It happened in Wasco, California. Oh, yes. That's what. Wasco. Okay. That, if I'm correct, that's up north, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's up north of Bakersfield, like 10, 15 minutes away from there. Oh, wow. Uh, I sent you a, I don't know if this number, you can send screenshots. I sent you a screenshot of it. No, we, 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 on there. yeah, we can't get no text message. It's just phone calls. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just wanted to send so like, uh, yeah, it happened just, you know, so you can all, it happened right there. You could check it on Facebook and you put it on there, a uh, person eating a human foot, you could see it on, on Facebook. Wow. So, so that actually did happen. Now, can you let the fans know who, who are barely tuning in, uh, um, what exactly happened? Like, do you know the full story? No, they just show on there that, like, somebody's kind of like, he lives on, he lives on, he lives possessed or something, but he's walking down, like, a street, and all the, the sheriffs are, like, trying to surround him, and you hear some, on one of the videos, one of the guys like, look, he's eating a foot, or something like that. Wow. But he's trying to walk away, and the cops are all surrounding him, and it looks tripped out. That guy looks all possessed, and he's eating it. They're showing him chewing on the, like, on the foot. Wow. I mean, are, are we that far gone now that... We're going to resort to eating, you know, human flesh. I mean, I, I, I believe that. I believe, man, it's in the, in the days already. And that's what, what's starting already, man. I really do believe that. People got to find God already, man. Yeah. Yeah. All good, my friend. I thank you for taking the time and sharing that with us and giving us a little bit more insight of where this took place. So it's Wasco, W-A, I guess, S-C-O, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. You can see it on the really cool Facebook. It's yeah. So, we'll, um, man, eating or something. And you'll find it right there, bro. You guys check it out. Uh, do your research, and then maybe we'll touch on it next week. So, thank you, caller, and I greatly appreciate you All taking right. the time and being a part of the show. All right, brother. You have a good one. You too. Okay, Norbert, that's it. Um, we got a couple of minutes, really quick. So, I wanted to ask you back to your question. So, if you worked in a funeral home, you would actually. Uh, take a selfie with a certain person and post it up? Oh, yeah. If they were very evil to the world and just added to it, uh, yeah, I, I'd like to give confirmation to the world that they, they are gone. Okay. Um, say, say you were living in the time of Hitler and you, you were there at the morgue and you saw his body and there were cameras. Would you would have taken a picture of him? If he actually died, yeah, I probably would have. Okay. What about uh, Richard Ramirez? Uh... Hmm. Maybe I have a level to evilness. Okay. Uh, Jeffrey Dahmer. Uh, no. Ed Gein. Probably not. Okay. Ted Bundy. Um, wait, did any of them uh, kill kids? John Wayne Gacy. Gacy did? Yes, he did. Okay, probably that guy. Okay. All right. Yeah, so... All right, so you heard it here first, guys. Norbert would take a selfie with somebody who's deceased already and post it up. I wouldn't. I wouldn't care. I'm, I would just be glad that they were gone. But with that being said, Norbert, you know what? Uh, I know you have some things you want to share. Yeah, we got okay. some super chats. Yeah, go ahead, please. Thank you guys for being a part of tonight's show. All right, uh, first one is uh, Isaiah Chavez. He dropped $2. Thank you. He said, thanks for not cutting the show today. <laughs> you're, you're very welcome. And again, the only reason why it was cut is because we had a power outage uh, right before, like about an hour, right before we went live. I believe it was about an hour. Next one is going to be Alfredo Sorio. Dropped $2. Tony, 
Hey, Tony A, try the pendulo humano. Let us know if it works. What is, I'm not sure what that is. Um, you got me too, man. It might be one of those jokes. Pendulo humano. You're probably supposed to say it really fast and it means something. Pendulo so, humano? Yeah. I don't know. I, I can't hear it, but... Uh, okay, but thank you. Thank you for that. But uh, that that should be it. That, okay. What about our questions, our polls? Uh, we had a lot of them, uh, but the last one would be, do you believe the Simpsons prediction? Uh, we got about 44 votes. Uh, 68% said they do believe in it. It's very interesting. 32% said no. You know, you know, I can give my opinion on that, but I don't give my opinion to start arguments. I think they make good discussions, but when people's feelings get involved, like, for example, I've had people approach me about the whole Simpson conspiracy. I've said this. Look, it's kind of funny that those things did happen. I just don't know if I would bet that this is true. And some people start arguing. Well, the proof is there. I'm not going to argue. I would, I would like a friendly discussion, you know, and go from there. But uh, uh, yeah, I said Chavez dropped two dollars. I uh, said continue the show, Tony. Thank you, uh, I, and we plan to. So once again, I'll be I'll be dropping more content on the members only. So become a member. Become a member. You won't regret it. Okay, uh, uh, I've been visiting a lot more spooky places, so you're definitely going to want to uh, check those out. So other than that, Norbert, you good? Uh, yeah, that should be everything. Okay. I want to thank everybody uh, on the live chat, those who were not on the live chat, those who liked, comment, subscribed, unsubscribed, disliked. I appreciate all you guys watching. I appreciate everybody who, you know, who is a fan of uh, not only my other podcast, but also Freaky Tales, who's a fan of the paranormal, who's a fan of all these freaky t tales, these freaky stories. I truly appreciate you guys uh, uh, tuning in. If you guys didn't tune in, I wouldn't be doing this, you know, just to do it. I do this for the fans and because I love it. So thank you, all callers. Thank everyone who gave. Thank everyone who commented. Thank everyone who continues to encourage me to keep it, keep this show going. So thank you. Uh, let me go ahead and thank my team, uh, Norbert, News of Norbies. Also, I want to give a shout out to Cervantes, Cervantes Enterprise, Alex. I want to give a shout out to the Hip Hop Jedi, uh, my co-host, Marvelous Inc., to my son, B. Scanless, and to our moderator, Genesis, uh, um, or Magic Girl. Um, thank you for uh, allowing me to call you so you can give us your, your knowledge on the, the whole necrophilia subject. So thank you. We'll be back next week. And once again, expect the unexpected and have a blessed night. And we are out of here. Uh, one last one from uh, Dego Jen. Just dropped $5. Uh, much appreciation, you two. Love the show. Thank you, my brother. Have a blessed one. And we're out of here.